Hello, this is Daryl Castle with today's podcast. Today is Friday, May 20th, 2016, and on today's podcast, we're going to discuss the Federal Reserve. I have said that if I were elected, two of the first things on my agenda would be getting the United States out of the United Nations. We talked about that last week. We talked about my reasons. The other item is ending the Federal Reserve, and today we talk about why I want to do that, why I believe so strongly that the United States should end the Federal Reserve's control of its monetary system. First, a little background. Currently, any money that is created comes into existence as debt. The United States government goes into more debt when it gets dollars from the Federal Reserve. Our individual Americans go into more debt when they take out loans from individual banks. If the U.S. decides it needs more dollars, it can't just print them. It has to ask the Federal Reserve for the dollars. The Federal Reserve, as you hopefully know, is a privately owned central bank that has been granted authority by the U.S. Congress to issue dollars, to set interest rates, and to run the United States economy. All government debt is created through the Federal Reserve system. When the government wants more money, it must swap U.S. Treasury bonds for Federal Reserve notes, thus creating more government debt. The term printed money is a misnomer because it is normally just digitally created on the Federal Reserve's computers. The Federal Reserve notes, or dollars, are created digitally, are backed by nothing, and have no intrinsic value. The Federal Reserve then takes the U.S. Treasury bonds it received in exchange for the Federal Reserve notes and sells them to investors, such as other nations like China. Sometimes they sell them back to themselves, which they've been doing a lot of lately. That is known as monetizing the debt or creating the money to buy your own debt. But the interest to pay that debt back is not created, which usually requires borrowing even more money in the future. This all creates an endless cycle of debt and shrinking value for the dollar. The dollar has lost 98% of its value since the Federal Reserve was created in 1913. None of this is a mistake, of course. It's the way the system was designed. It was designed to enslave the U.S. government. And all of us in perpetual debt, the U.S. government could start the process of getting out of debt by abolishing the Federal Reserve, by taking control from the private bankers and by issuing debt-free money. Instead, the Federal Reserve seems to grow more powerful by the day. You and I cannot make money magically appear, and neither can the U.S. government. Only the Federal Reserve can do that. The Federal Reserve has the legal right to do it. One of the ways they do that is through the magic of fractional reserve banking. The New York Federal Reserve Bank explains fractional reserve banking for us like this, quote, if the reserve requirement is 10%, for example, a bank that receives a $100 deposit may lend out $90 of that deposit. If the borrower then writes a check to someone who deposits the $90 check, the bank receiving that check can lend out $81. As this process continues, the banking system can expand the initial deposit of $100 into a maximum of $1,000 of newly created money, 100 plus 90 plus 81 plus 72, etc., until you get to 1,000. That seems rather complicated, doesn't it? But it's actually simple. See, the bank takes your money that you deposit. It doesn't keep it all. It keeps only a small percentage and it loans the rest out. Each time it loans it out, it creates more money. When you want it back, they have only a small part on hand. This is called the reserve amount. Any bank can loan out as much as it wants, i.e. it can create its own money as long as it keeps enough on hand to satisfy the Federal Reserve's legal requirements of the reserve amount. If we all went to the bank at the same time, only a tiny bit of our money would actually be there. Recently, Dr. Ron Paul gave a speech to the Cato Institute in which he said, I think there's no doubt that the Federal Reserve is immoral. 
It's unconstitutional and it's a disaster. We don't need it, end quote. I would add to Dr. Paul's statement that the Federal Reserve policies have ruined savers, destroyed the middle class, and created a debt tidal wave. That should terrify anyone who understands it. Why then can't we just return to sound money and be done with the Federal Reserve because interest groups benefit from things remaining the way they are, the big banks, the big bond dealers, the federal government, which is now a debt slave, and many others, all benefit from the power to create money and the willingness to do it. Our economic structures, our very lives have become dependent on the whims of a group of unelected monetary dictators, the most dependent is the government itself, which must have the Fed's power to print in the event of crisis. No need for sanity with the Fed. And there, it is not much of a stretch to say that it has usurped the Congress and the President and actually controls the country. Think about the real effect of what all this means, folks. Without the Fed, there would have been no invasion of Iraq, absent, impossible to pass tax hikes. Without that invasion, there would be no ISIS. Without ISIS, no invasion by immigration of Europe and the United States. No invasion of Afghanistan, no attack on Libya, no regime change by force in Syria. Speculation, you say? Perhaps so. But if so, it is a very reasonable speculation. What should we have done? That is the question. What should we do? Keep in mind that I'm the only presidential candidate who will touch this issue. In the Fed right now, that's my position, folks. That's what I say. In the Fed right now, return to sound non-debt money with a gold-backed dollar. Allow competing currencies so people could use whatever currency they choose. Let the free market set interest rates. Soon, this would be a dynamic, growing economy again. At least, that's the way I see it. Until next time, folks, this is Daryl Castle. Thanks for listening.